Joining me here on 104.5 The Team and 104.5theteam.com is MLB.com draft and prospect expert Jonathan Mayo. Jonathan, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Excellent. We're talking about Garrett Whitley here leading up to the Major League Draft, which starts on Monday. Garrett Whitley, the Niski Una High School outfielder. I was on the phone with him just two hours ago. He said he's talked to all 30 teams, but he wouldn't give an indication or didn't have an indication of who was looking at him seriously. What are you hearing? Well, first of all, I have to give him props for his savvy, not uh, not giving uh, giving up any inside information. Um, that will serve him well in the future, I think. Uh, I think there are a number of teams that are looking at him. You know, there's a decent crop of high school outfielders out there. They're all, you know, there are a couple that are going to go in the top ten. Uh, Daz Cameron and Kyle Tucker uh, are, are likely to, to go in that realm. And then there's a group that comes kind of after that. Trenton Clark from Texas uh, is one, and Whitley is another. And and I've been hearing his name anywhere from 10 through down into the teens, you know, depending on what people like. You know, there, there was some buzz at one point in time that the Diamondbacks were talking to him in a, a, a possible deal scenario at number one. It seems highly unlikely, but, you know, you never know when things can blow up. Uh, they probably had the conversation. Uh, but uh, I think it's more likely to see him go, you know, in the 11, 12, 13 range, uh, somewhere in, in that neck of the woods. Are certain organizations more likely to take a prep outfielder? Or are certain organizations more likely to shy away from a prep outfielder? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess so, although I think those lines have blurred somewhat. Uh, you know, there are teams that tend not to go high school bat early on, um, but there are enough, especially teams that are in that area, that don't shy away from that. Uh, the Cincinnati Reds at 11, you've got the the Marlins at 12, the Rays at 13, all have shown a propensity for taking high school hitters in the past. That's why I think there's a good fit in there. Uh, even the Cleveland Indians at 17, uh, they've taken high school you know, hitters uh, a bunch with their first picks over the last few years. Um, hey, you know, it used to be that the Oakland A's were the team that always took, you know, they, they have that reputation for taking college guys. and They've taken high school bats uh, in the first round for the last, uh, last few drafts. So uh, that's down at 20. Uh, I can't imagine Whitley going further than that. Um, I, I think, you know, more often than not these days, teams really take the best player available. Now, they may value a college arm that can get there quicker uh, over uh, over a high school bat, but, you know, there aren't that many potential impact college bats uh, that would directly compete with, well, we want an offensive player and a college guy will get there faster. There aren't that many in this draft. So, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, if that's what you want, you're better off going after one of the high school hitters. What makes Garrett Whitley so projectable? We know he's got a great combination of speed and power. I talked to John Manuel of Baseball America a few weeks ago who compared him to Mike Trout, at least in his his skill set. Uh, is that a fair comparison, and what makes him so projectable? Uh, I mean, I've heard that, too. <laughs> I've heard uh, Andrew McCutcheon as well, so not to put any pressure on the young man, uh, but... Uh, you know, it is one of those things where if everything comes together, then yeah, uh, obviously you never can expect a high school player to become my, I mean, people didn't know Mike Trout was going to be Mike Trout. Uh, and Andrew McCutcheon, you know, took some time. So uh, I think there's the, there's the combination. It's not just that he has speed and he's got strength for power. Um, he's got a feel for the game. Uh, which has impressed a lot of people, especially considering when you play in the Northeast, and I'm, you know, I'm a Northeast guy, so like I know how hard it is just to get out and play. Uh, you know, so the, the fact that he's been able to to show those skills, and more than anything, with the power, it, it's just bat speed. Uh, and he's gotten comparisons bat speed wise to guys like Justin Upton, and you know Andrew McCutcheon also has ridiculous bat speed, and that's where the power comes from, uh, and that bodes well. Uh, you know, for him in the future. If you were just a guy who muscled up the ball uh, or, you know, complete pure raw athlete, uh, he'd be intriguing, but he probably wouldn't be talked about as a top half of the first round kind of guy. I think it's the combination of those raw tools and and his feel for the game that uh, have a lot of teams interested. Is there a sense that Garrett Whitley will sign? Is that part of the reason why he's so high up here? Do people think he'll sign or will he go to Wake Forest? Is there a chance of that? I think that... uh, that's all part of it, you know, the, the signability factor. But, uh, you know, in the early going when he was ranked high, that was just based on evaluations of his talent. The signability conversations come later. Unless, of course, uh, 
you know, a player puts out a high price tag early on, so they know. And there, there have been some players in this draft who have even sent out letters telling teams not to draft. Um, by and large, when a guy goes in the top half of the first round, he's going to sign. Uh, you know, unless he's just dead set on going to college, which is a fine decision. Uh, but, you know, when you're talking about the money that's assigned to the pick values, uh, even in the teens, um, it's hard to imagine that if Garrett would be goes you know in the top 15 that he, he's not going to sign garrett willie will be at the draft on monday jonathan mayo mlb.com with us here today thanks for being with us jonathan thanks for having me